Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Myung Jin and San. Let's deal with the elephant in the room, so to speak. There was an election in the United States last night, and today, slightly more than half of the populace is jumping for joy. Slightly less than half of the populace is sad. Now, this uh, talk actually has more to do with um, equanimity than anything else although there are a couple of other things. So let's get the other elephant in the room dealt with. The great way is easy for those not attached to preferences. So, uh, you know, it's not as if I haven't talked about the Xin Jinping often enough lately, but here was another perfect opportunity with regard to equanimity and how people might feel about things today, um, I'm not one to, you know, broach the subject of what would the Buddha do? Because there's like 84,000 sutras and any number of commentaries and writings from Zen masters, both old and modern. And if you want to know, you could probably look it up. But what do we do as Zen practitioners, practitioners of the great way? What do we do specifically? How do we deal with this? either the feeling of overt joy or overt sadness, or maybe in between. One of the things that we uh, are told about is, in addition to equanimity, in the four Brahma Viharas, the concept of mudita. And mudita is usually translated as sympathetic joy. Now, that might be an issue for some of us today, but it is one of the perfections. It is one of those things that we should as practitioners of the great way, try and manifest might be difficult today. Maybe not. I would say that uh, Schadenfreude, the taking glee in the bad fortune of others, is 180 degrees opposite of mudita. It just dawned on me in my ride home through the woods in the dark. It was like, yeah, that's 180 degrees apart. That's absolutely 100% op opposite. So if you have a hard time figuring out what mudita is, where you have sympathetic joy, where you feel happy for someone in, in their good fortune, if that seems a little obtuse somehow, like you can't quite wrap your head around it. Think of Schadenfreude, where you're really happy about the failure of someone else, and it's the opposite of that. Our practice is to approach, confront, deal with reality. Right here, right now, as it is from moment to moment, reality. Not what I wish would be, not what I 
am afraid of what might be, what I hope will be, any of that. It's right here, right now, from moment to moment. And if you are feeling joyful or sad, feel them. Feel them fully. Feel them for as long as they actually last. And then let them go. Put them down. Because they are impermanent feelings. They are characterized by emptiness, I dare say. Everything changes. Some things more quickly than others. But it's just a fact. It's part of reality. We accept reality and also as Zen practitioners, we approach things from the standpoint of how do we save all beings? How do we help? How do we not harm, if nothing else? What is it that's going to tr contribute to the welfare of all sentient beings? Even if it's like one at a time, what are we going to do to help all sentient beings? Not just half, or slightly less than half, or slightly more than half, or all sentient beings except for me, because I'm part of all also, what do I do to help all sentient beings? We have to approach our day-to-day -day lives from the standpoint of being Zen practitioners. I'm not saying that we have a lock on being good, wholesome, contributing members of the human society, but we have been exposed to the Dharma, and that should be doing a good job of pointing the way of what it is we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to approach our day-to-day -day lives with wisdom. We are being handed wisdom every day from each other, from the sutras, from the writings of Zen masters, from just the Sangha at large. We're always learning something. We're always being taught a new way to put our uh, practice into action. And as far as I'm concerned, and there are some pedantic people out there that'll probably take exception to this, but I have always considered Zen to be a verb. And I'm not just talking about the, you know, literal translation of, of Zen as, you know, going back to the Sanskrit dhyana and, you know, it means meditation, so ergo it's a verb. No, I'm talking about putting our practice into action not just passively sitting by, not just accepting and, uh, okay, here I am being, uh, exhibiting equanimity. It doesn't have to be like that. There are things that we can do that will help all sentient beings. Sung San would often talk about the primary point, and that's that, that seed of equilibrium 
in between one extreme and the other back when the pendulum swings back and forth and it slows down and you get back to the primary point where you're unperturbed by these things that are impermanent, where you exhibit equanimity, where you realize what parts of reality are characterized by shunyata, emptiness. And that's like 99% of what we encounter on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Every now and then, if you look hard enough, if you concentrate it on it hard enough, you might find that 1% that we actually nail that's the great way itself. But otherwise, all empty, all subject to change, all impermanent. So the question is, in our acceptance and acknowledging reality, and not picking and choosing what part of reality we like and what part we don't, what do we do? I would say another one of my, let's get the elephant in the room dealt with things. We accept reality because it's reality. I mean, it, my fretting about it or being overjoyed about it isn't going to change reality. I don't have that power. It's not in my job description that I can somehow change reality. Reality is what it is. I can, however, create causes and conditions that will have an effect on changing reality. We accept what it is. We don't have to settle for it. If there are things that we can do exhibiting generosity and morality and patience and vigor and concentration and wisdom, if we can apply those things, if we can apply compassion, if we can apply sympathetic joy through our use of wisdom, then perhaps we can go about saving slash helping all sentient beings, including ourselves, including the entire uh, world, all sentient beings, not just a few. How are we going to do that? Now what? 